Awesome. Thanks, Cliff, and welcome back again, everybody. It's Diane, myself, and, and Cliff offering the camera. This is the uh, sixth, sixth in the intubation video series that we're doing for you guys. So you have a chance to observe this at home and probably chuckle about it more than anything. Anyways, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be putting the endotracheal tube into the patient. So I want to show you a couple of things, a couple of techniques that might make it a bit easier for you to insert the tube. First of all, how you hold the blade. Grab it in your left hand, and remember the technique for inserting is going on the right hand side of the patient's mouth and swooping over the tongue, placing the tip into the molecular as you do so, and then moving upwards and forwards with the blade to visualize the glottic opening. You'll be holding your endotracheal tube in your right hand, and I like to grab it right around 22 centimeters so I know when my fingers hit the patient's teeth, I've got the tube in a sufficient length. Now to get in the proper position, I'm going to kind of give you a side view, is when I'm intubating, I like to take my hand and my arm, walk them in one position so that my wrist stays nice and straight. I don't get into this wrist habit of putting the, my, moving my wrist in this fashion and using the top teeth as a leverage point to visualize because I want to keep the bottom teeth clear of my laryngoscope. So the position I typically get in, as I kind of crouch a bit, I put my right foot behind my left foot, I give myself a nice straight back and I usually use my legs a lot to help lift up the airway and to insert the tube into the patient. So this gives me a good ergonomic position and a good feel, a lot of strength to get the tube in. And it doesn't take a lot of strength to get the tube into a real live patient um, or a patient in general. These intubation heads, it's a little bit more difficult. You should get somebody to hold the head down for you, but in a real situation, you probably won't have to do that. You may have to get this patient or the, somebody to help you out with burp technique. That's back, upwards, right pressure, that's burp or cricoid pressure. Burp is the most common one used. Back, upwards, right pressure. So at this point in time, light's still good. Let's intubate the patient. Ready? So remember, hyperoxygenate and ventilate, do something. We've already suctioned out the airway. We've already anesthetized the airway. Now we're going to put the airway into the patient. Okay, so we'll remove the OPA. I'm going in on the right-hand side, looking at the structures of the airway. There's my open glottis, in up to the teeth. Look at my mark. I'm at 21 at the patient's teeth. I've closed the laryngoscope blade. Take the style that out, holding the tube in place. Diane's going to connect. Flate the cuff. First breath goes in. The end tidal CO2 detector changes. We're going to auscultate over top of the patient's stomach. We're going to auscultate over both lungs. Check the condensation in the tube. We've got all that. We are confirmed that we're in the trachea. We don't exactly know where in the trachea we are, but we are in fact inside the trachea. So now we can commence with securing the tube in place. And that's what we're going to do in the next video. We'll show you how to properly tape the tube in place. So just a quick really recap. Position yourself appropriately. Place the laryngoscope blade on the right side of the patient's mouth. Sweep the tongue out of the way while you're advancing the blade, looking for the patient's molecula. The tip of the blade goes inside the molecula, then with one upwards and forward motion, you're lifting the tongue out of the way and you're exposing the glottic opening. Once you visualize that, advance the tube into the patient's airway. To the required depth, make sure that the tube goes beyond the vocal cords at least two to three centimeters thus ensuring it's between the carina and the vocal cords. When you've got that done, remove the style that, inflate the cuff, attach your mounted resuscitator with the appropriate connection device, and you can kind of see this one does have the ET CO2 detector, as well as the PEEP diverter and PEEP valve. I've set the PEEP at five centimeters of water pressure. Commence with ventilation, and with that first breath, auscultate for tube positioning, ensuring that the tube is in fact in the trachea. And how do you assess? Check to make sure the chest is rising. Listen over the stomach. Listen over the patient's lungs with your stethoscope as well. Make sure you check your end tidal CO2 device for color change or a visual number that it's giving you if it's an end tidal CO2 monitor. And check the condensation inside your patient's endotracheal tube. So the tube's in. Now we need to secure it in place. Before that, though, I'm going to still confirm that it's at 21, and it's still at 20. 21 <laughs> at the patient's teeth. 